Hello guys and welcome to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with the first topic of this series which is about introduction to Java. So when we talk about Java it is one of the most popular programming language out there and it was created way back in 1991 but it was publicly released only in 1995. It was developed by one of the famous developers of our generation who is James Gosling at Sun Microsystems and then later Java was acquired by Oracle and today Oracle owns Java. Java is very simple and easy to use and we will look at different aspects of how it is easy and simple to use. It's a write once run anywhere type of programming language. Again we will look at details into, into, into this particular concept as well and when we talk about the usage of Java you can use it to build web applications, mobile applications, desktop applications, even command line applications. And at the same time, you can also use it to build complex applications like gaming applications, building microservices, or building distributed computing, etc. Let's talk about the features of Java. So one of the most prominent features of Java is that it's an object-oriented programming language, which means that everything which happens in Java happens around objects. Objects enable the execution of the program. Objects talk to each other to exchange data and messages. We will look, about, look at the concept of objects in details in the upcoming lectures. It's a platform independent language which means that uh, again going back to the previous point of write once run anywhere. Uh, it basically enables the program to be run on any platform once compiled. So once you have prepared your program and you have compiled your program then your compiled program can be run on any platform. It is a strong type checking language which means that it will force you to respect the contracts of the variables to the data types. For example if you have created a collection which should accept strings then you can only insert strings in that collection and it will not allow you to add an, a number or an integer into that collection. So it's a strongly type checking language. So when you run your program, it's a two-step process in Java. You compile the program and then you, then you execute the program, which we also call as interpretation. So you have a Java compiler and you have a Java interpreter. You first compile your program and then you run the program using the help of Java interpreter. Java also provides automatic garbage collection. It's a really important feature. And if you talk about the languages prior to Java, like C or C++, they did not offer this capability and this capability made Java really popular because it could automatically find the unused objects and variables and remove them from the memory to free up memory space for the program execution. It also provides multi-threading support which means that you can build multi-threading applications like a gaming application. If you take the example of a racing game for example, so there's, there, there can be one thread which is monitoring your leaderboard score there can be another thread which is displaying the speed of the car. There can be another thread which is displaying the graphic. There can be another thread which is displaying the sound. So you see all of these threads are working parallelly and Java provides the support to create such applications using the multi-threading capability it has. Java is secure by default because there are no pointers in Java. So there are no possibilities of having any memory leaks or any reference leaks from the application. Again, if you take the example of uh, programming languages like C or C++, you had the concept of pointers and we, we witnessed lot of, uh, a lot of scenarios and a lot of incidents where there was a memory leakage happening in the, in the production application, which was, which was really a bad experience for the organizations. So Java removed the concept of pointers totally from its programming language. It's also a very robust language because it provides a really great exception handling framework out of the box which developers can use and implement to build really resilient applications. So now let us understand how a Java program is run. So at first you basically write your Java program and you store your Java program into a .java file. Then you compile your Java file with the help of the Java compiler. Once the program is compiled, the compiler is going to generate another file which is a dot class file and this dot class file is basically the compiled file or also known as the bytecode file. 
So this byte code or the, the dot class file code can be run on any platform, be it a Linux platform or a Windows platform or a Mac OS platform or any other platform. To give you some more context, the first two steps where you write your Java program and you compile your Java program can be run on any machine. Let's take the example that you ran these two steps on a Windows machine. So you ran your, uh, you write your program and you compile your program on a Windows machine, which generated a dot class file. Then you transported this dot class file to a Linux machine and it also worked there. You transported your dot class file to a Mac OS machine and it worked there as well. And that's what brings the platform independence concept of Java that you can write the program once on any platform. And once you have the bytecode available, then you can run this program on any other platform of your choice. Okay, so that was about how the Java program execution works and how the platform independence is actually achieved. Now, uh, let us spend some time to understand the anatomy of Java. So once you download Java and install Java on your local machine, you will hear the term JDK. Actually, if you will see that in the next lecture that when you try to download the Java, it will say JDK download. JDK stands for Java Development Kit. So the Java development kit is the installation of the Java. This is what you're going to install on your machine. Once the JDK or Java development kit has been installed, the JDK will provide lot of other components as well, like Java runtime environment or JRE, Java virtual machine or JVM, some class libraries and some other supporting libraries. So let us understand what happens when your program is run and how these components work together to make sure that your program runs as expected. Let's start from here. So you install JDK or the Java development kit, you write your program and then you compile your program with the help of Java compiler, which is provided by JDK. Once the program is compiled, your dot class file will be generated and then you can uh, run that dot class file using JRE. In fact, if you just run your program on your local machine, JRE will automatically kick in and run your dot class file. So the Java runtime environment or JRE runs your dot class file with the help of these three components. Let's talk about first component, which is Java virtual machine or JVM. So the Java virtual machine is actually the virtual environment inside which your program runs. This is the real main environment inside your dot class file is running. So when, uh, when this program is running, how does it achieve this environment for achieving this virtual virtual machine environment? It would need some runtime libraries and that is provided by these class libraries. For example, there would be a runtime jar or RT dot jar as a shorthand, which will be supplied to the program at the runtime to make sure that the program runs smoothly. Then there are other supporting libraries as well, which your program may be using. For example, if this program, this dot class file is, let's say a calculator program, then it might be using uh, a square root function from java.math package. So how do, how does the java.math package get supplied at runtime? It would be supplied by the other supporting libraries, which are present inside GRE. So GRE will make sure that your program runs inside the Java virtual machine. It gets the required runtime libraries and it also gets the libraries which are referred in your program at runtime. And this all together will make sure that your program is running. So you can see JDK basically uh, provides GRE automatically and JVM automatically, but you can also install GRE separately. If you talk about that use case where you compile your program on a Windows machine using JDK and then you exported your dot class file to another machine and there you just installed the JRE. You don't install JDK there. You just installed the runtime environment and you can run the dot class file just using the runtime environment. And that brings us to the end of this lecture. And if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe Simply Learn for more programming related videos and we'll meet again in the next lecture. Thank you.